We may have just five games on tonight's slate for Daily Fantasy Baseball, but they will be a five games, a fun five games automatically because we've got Shohei Otani pitching for the Angels for tonight, which always makes the slate more fun, always makes night of baseball more fun. And I'm not going to lie, it's kind of a uh, no thought spot here for Otani where you just put it on the top of your list and go from there. I think things after that are a bit more unclear, both for secondary options at pitcher and for stacking. So we'll dive in on Otani, let you know my thoughts on him, but then we'll try to dig in and decide who sits second at pitcher, which stack should we use, and much more, because that part a bit tougher for tonight's slate. So let's dive on in and break down Wednesday night's five-game slate. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com, here to break down that five-game slate with locks up for 7.05 p.m. Eastern for today. Out in St. Louis, there is at least a chance of rain for tonight for the Cardinals and the Cubs. The rain odds increase as the night goes along, but... I think they should be able to get that full game in. Check back on the timing of that weather later on. But as of right now, I'm assuming that game will be good to go and could be prominent for stacking later on as well. We'll break down that, plus Otani and more in just one second. But first, a reminder to check out the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. Our breakdown of this week's Wyndham Championship for PGA DFS is posted. The final event before the FedEx Cup playoffs, Brandon Gadula and I broke down our favorite golfers in each salary tier, and much more. Find that by searching for the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like what you hear, uh, leave us a rating and review as well. This baseball season turned K's into cash and big hits into big wins with FanDuel Sportsbook. Right now, new customers can step up to the plate with a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. With great promotions every day, a safe and secure app, and the ability to get paid fast, there is no better place to bet America's pastime than on America's number one sportsbook. Download the FanDuel Sportsbook app and sign up today to get started with your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Must be 21-plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. Refund issued as non-withdrawable free bets that expire 14 days after a seat. Restrict supply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG. In Arizona, call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. In Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-889-9789. In Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700. Or in West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Pitching preview for this Wednesday main slate show. Hey, Otani checks in as the highest salary pitcher on FanDuel coming in at $11,300. Not as bad as it could have been from a salary perspective. Freddie Peralta is back off the IL. He checks in at 10-5. Miles Miklas facing the Cubs is 95. Julio Urias is 93 with Blake Snell at 91. And Alex Cobb at $8,200. Now we get Otani against the A's tonight. I shouldn't need to say much more than that. It's a perfect spot. You're going to put Otani at the top. The A's active roster has a 90 WRC plus versus righties. Got about a league average strikeout rate. Their walk rate is below average. And we love all that. And Otani is just taking a blowtorch to all of baseball right now. We're up to 10 starts on Otani with fewer forcing fastballs. His strikeout rate is 38%. He has a 2.20 skill interactive ERA with a 6% walk rate. We've seen Otani get double-digit strikeouts in six straight games, and it's not just double digits. He's had more than 10 in all but one of those, so 11-plus in five of his past six. It is an unreal stretch of baseball Otani is on right now, so he's a top guy for cash games. He's a top guy for tournaments. He's a top guy for single-entry tournaments. He's a top guy across the board. You just use him. It's necessary. Do it. Shohei Otani, the no-thought top spot for tonight. The second spot behind Otani is more open to interpretation. But for me, I'm going to go with Julio Arias at number two. It is a tougher matchup for him facing the Giants because they can hit lefties. They have a 115 WRC plus against lefties this year, and they put the ball in the air a lot. But they will strike out. And Arias has been getting more of those strikeouts recently. He's been upping his forcing fastball usage across his past 10 starts, and 
In that time, Orias' strikeout rate is 28%, which is much better than it was earlier on this year. Now, he's getting more strikeouts while also keeping his hard hit rate low. It's at 32%, which is the best mark on tonight's main slate. There are a couple downsides here. The Giants did just see Rios back on July 23rd. That was two starts ago. So there is some familiarity within this matchup. Also, Rios doesn't get the biggest leash from a pitch count perspective. He's on the road. So that's why I prefer Otani regardless of game type. But I think Rios is a pretty good leg up for second as well over the rest of the pack because he's pitching really well right now, getting strikeouts, high strikeout matchup. Suppressing hard contact, that's enough for me to put Arias number two and feel pretty good about it behind Otani for tonight. I'm going to stick in that same game for our value play here. That's with Alex Cobb at $8,200. Cobb might be third straight up for me, regardless of salary. It's either him or Blake Snell. But I will take the discount here and be okay with Cobb at 82 Obviously, the matchup is not ideal facing the Dodgers. Uh, they're pretty lethal against everyone, including righties. And Cobb can at least counteract part of that with his contact suppression. Over the past five starts, Cobb has upped his splitter usage back up to where it was earlier on this year. In that time, he has let up just a 19% fly ball rate. It's a very good number. And that's a big aid when you're facing a team as powerful as the Dodgers are. That's how he can feel okay with Cobb in this matchup. Also just a 35% hard hit rate allowed. So we can feel better about him in tougher spots because of the contact suppression. The upside has come more recently. Cobb had 11 strikeouts in his most recent game, which is also at home. He had six against the Dodgers back on July 24th, so that does mean they saw him recently. We don't like that, and they did score four runs against him there. But Cobb is back at home in this one. He has a path to double-digit strikeouts. He should suppress hard contact, too. He's in a pitcher-friendly park at home. His salary is 82 I think there are enough upsides to Cobb to allow me to use him despite this not being a perfect spot. I don't think anybody outside of Otani is in a perfect situation for tonight. So to me, I'm going to go Otani one by a wide margin. If you decided to use only Otani, no pushback. I might do the same. Uh, Arias number two, Cobb number three, then Blake Snell will be number four. for tonight. We'll talk about Freddie Peralta and his situation in things to watch later on. First, though, let's talk about the new look Padres. We transition to the stacking section facing Chad Cool tonight. And I got to be honest, I have no idea who will be on this Padres roster in time to play because a lot of guys traveling from the from the East Coast to get here. I don't know what the timing of that will be. It does help that those trades were mostly finalized earlier in the morning. So whoever is there tonight for the Padres, I think they're in play for stacking. Cool's peripherals are ones we can stack against both at Coors Field and elsewhere. In fact, Cool's ERA on the road this year is 5.03. And it makes a lot of sense when you dig into the peripherals he's got. Across 19 starts, Cool has a 5.02 skill interactive ERA with a 17% strikeout rate. His hard hit rate and fly ball rate are both higher than the league average as well. So what you get is a guy who lets up a lot of balls in play. Those balls in play are hard hit. So I don't care if you're in Denver, San Diego, Tampa, Boston. It doesn't really matter. That's something we can stack against. We get a chance to do that here with a crazy fun team. So it's kind of a, you know, treat yourself kind of slate. Use Otani. That's fun. Use the new look Padres. That's kind of fun too. I don't know who will be able to play here, but we should know before lock. I'd assume their lineup should be up before then. Um, the good thing is it's a very staggered start tonight too. First game at 7.05. And then there's no second game until 7.45. So even if we don't get the lineup right away, we should know before that second game. And I think that'll help things out quite a bit. So we'll know in time who will be starting for today and should be able to fill out good lineups based on that. Uh, but the Padres overall, a fun team for tonight. I'm curious where Jerks and Profar shakes out in this new look lineup because he's been super fun this year. He's got a 199 ISO against righties. He has the second best WRC plus on the original team behind just Manny Machado. So excluding uh, Soto, Bell, et cetera, et cetera. And Profar can steal some bases. I want to keep using him. I assume he'll be somewhere at a decent spot in the order. So I think he's been hitting well enough where you don't drop him out of the top, you know, third, uh, the top half of the lineup. So 
I'm more than okay keeping Profar on my lineups. I still am very on board with him. We'll see where he sh- settles in, but um, everyone here benefits from having good batters being out of this lineup. Hopefully they're there for tonight. I would love to use guys like Soto uh, and Bell, but we'll see uh, what the lineup looks like. Either way, the Padres are a fun team for stacking today. The Brewers are facing Tyler Beatty tonight. Beatty has been really good as a reliever, often in longer stints. You know, he's been going 30 to 40 pitches pretty often for the Pirates. I'm not looking to stack against him specifically, but Beatty is not stretched out yet, which means we're going to see a good number of middle relievers in play here. And if you can if you can increase exposure to middle relievers in DFS in general, that's going to be a good thing. And I think that does bode well for the Brewers in terms of stacking for tonight. Beatty's likely getting stretched out here to replace uh, Jose Quintana. I've got Beatty projected for 50 pitches tonight, and he's pretty solid. He has a 3.71 skill interactive ERA since he started working in a sinker more often, but not a ton of strikeouts, doesn't really suppress hard contact. He does get ground balls, which is annoying, but that could slip backwards a bit as he gets stretched out further and can't keep that same velo for the entire time. After that, things will go over to the bullpen here. Once again, they're fine. They're okay, but they're not a bullpen we need to fear. If we're getting middle relievers all potentially stretched longer than usual, we can stack against that. So this is not about Beatty. I think Beatty's going to be fine as a reliever or as a starter, probably somewhere in the 4.3 skill interactive ERA range, if, he, if I had to guess. That's not bad. It's more about the situation overall, and it makes me want to stack the Brewers here for tonight. One thing we we'll want to be cautious with is that two of the middle relievers the Pirates have are lefties, and neither of those guys worked either Monday or Tuesday. So we'll probably see a lefty in there at some point tonight, which is going to make me higher on guys like Willie Adamas and Hunter Renfro, who can hit both righties and lefties in order to safeguard themselves for when the lefties do come out of the bullpen. I'm still okay with the lefties. They'll get at least a couple of whacks against Beatty, but I at least want to keep in mind that we should bump up guys who are good against both righties and lefties to safeguard ourselves for when the inevitable lefty comes out of the pen for the Pirates here. So keep that in mind for sure. Okay with the lefties, but I would prefer guys who can hit well against guys of both handednesses. Is that plural? Handed and I? Handednesses? Whatever. I don't know what the plural word of handedness is. Either way, guys who can hit both righties and lefties. Probably the easy way to say that there. Now for our third stack... We're going to stack against a guy I don't typically stack against. That's Justin Steele, because Steele does a really nice job with contact suppression, which is a pretty big buzzkill for stacking. But the Cardinals obliterate lefties, and I think that matchup is tough enough to let us stack against him on just a five-game slate. I thought my spreadsheet was bugging out when I was looking at this matchup yesterday, because, you know, I will... It'll pull in data versus righties and lefties and automatically populate once I tell the, the spreadsheet which hand this the guy has. And it pulled up the Cardinals' numbers against lefties. It is just 600 plate appearances, so there is some small sampleness in there. But they have a 150 WRC plus against lefties on the current active roster. To give you some context on that, if the quote-unquote Cardinals against lefties were a single batter across the full Major League Baseball season, they'd rank 12th among all qualified batters this year in WRC+. plus, They're insane. And that means you need to be an extra level of good to shut them down. I like Steele. I'm just not sure he's there right now. His skill interactive ERA is 4.18. He's lit up a 33% hard hit rate. He does get ground balls 52% of the time, which is pretty annoying. I'm just not sure if it's enough to hold this specific team in check. I do feel uncomfortable stacking against him. I just think we need to with this team on a small slate. So I will put the Cardinals third on my list for stacking in large part due to the fact that Steele is a lefty and they send them to the moon. One of my focal points in uh, stacking here will be a focal point of the trade discussions, a focal point of some vitriol yesterday. That's uh, Dylan Carlson. Uh, Carlson was, you know, uh, get, catching some heat on Twitter as it seemed like they were reluctant to move him. But hey, I mean, at least against lefties, I kind of get it. Uh, 219 ISO against lefties this year for Carlson. It was 187 last year. Hasn't had the best results so far this month, but Carlson does get bumped up against lefties. Likely, I would bet to bat second or so for $2,700. I like that quite a bit. So Dylan Carlson uh, went yard last night. Seems like the uh, 
I don't know if this is a revenge narrative against Twitter or whatever it may be, but hey, uh, he, had, he had a home run last night. So revenge narrative in play for Dylan Carlson. I do like him here at $2,700. Let's go now to things to watch. And it's uh, Freddie Peralta time. He's back. I love Freddie Peralta in general, but not expecting a full pitch count for tonight. I haven't projected for 70 pitches. He went 33 and 52 in his two rehab starts. So I will happily watch him, kind of like DeGrom, where I just like watching Freddie Peralta, but not enough leash for DFS right now until that pitch count gets lengthened out a bit more. I don't mind using one-offs on the Angels. Just kind of hard to get a full stack here with Otani pitching and Mike Trout being out. They're facing James Caprellian, who lets up a lot of fly balls. Doesn't get many strikeouts, and that's kind of the key weakness for the Angels lineup. So I think we can look at guys, uh, if there's anyone you want to use here, I'm not sure if there is, honestly. Like, I looked into Taylor Ward. His numbers recently are really brutal. The peripherals are, are bad. Jared Walsh is okay. Uh, but, like, you know, if you find someone you like on the Angels, if you like their talent, like what they're doing right now, cool. Lock them in because the match is pretty good. But I can't do much more than that because this lineup is real bad right now. Let's finish up here with some dinger calls. And it's a treat yourself kind of slate. It's a have some fun kind of slate. So, I'm just going to assume Juan Soto is going to be in San Diego tonight. Let's just make Juan Soto the home run call for today. I feel like uh, he's shown at times when he's motivated to hit dingers. He definitely can. Um, so let's just do it. Let's go Juan Soto as the home run pick for tonight. If he doesn't play, if he's not there in time, I don't know. Well, I guess we'll probably just go like Machado or something. I don't know. It'll be a Padre, but uh, we'll go Soto. I, I think he'll be out there for tonight. If he is, let's go Juan Soto in his Padres debut to be the home run call for the first, uh, for the boring one. The fun one will be more fun, uh, but that's Paul DeYoung. He was tearing it up at AAA, comes back up to the majors, hits home runs in his first two games back. Didn't go yard last night, so the streak is dead, but facing a lefty, we know DeYoung has power. He had the, I don't know if this is a real nickname, but the Dedong profile uh nickname previously so i don't know he's fun uh he's a non-prominent member of the, the cardinals in terms of which guys we typically turn to so home run calls for today juan soto for the funsies and paul de young for the fun one for today that's all we got here on the solo shot once again gonna be a fun slate i think you just kind of go otani um lock him in go from there if you don't want to go there rios Cobb, snell all in play Hold off on Peralta to the pitch count gets back up. And then the uh, the best staff for tonight, the Padres, depending on who gets there. But it's a fun slate. I'm excited to see how things play out for tonight. Do not forget to check out our PGA DFS podcast right here in the same feed, the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed to get set for the Wyndham Championship, which tees off tomorrow. Uh, check that out wherever you get your podcasts. Also, UFC and NASCAR each week. NFL about a month away. Two, twice per weekly, uh, twice weekly DFS podcast here on this feed, recap podcast and preview podcast. If you have not hit subscribe yet, go do so, get yourself subscribed. And while you're there, if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your DFS lineups. Have fun watching Otani and the New Look Padres tonight. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down Thursday's slate. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.